three twists, balloon dogs, no bad clowns, and cheap wigs here. Raise the bar, prove our art form. It's the Balloon Blast video show with Scott Tripp and Sam Crummy. Hi folks and welcome back to Balloon Blast. He's Scott Tripp. He's Sam Cremains. And we've got this great show for you this week. I've got a segment coming up with one of my tutorials. Scott? Um, well, I took a week off. Let's do one more Scraps and Crap. And I think we'll call it a series at that. That sounds good to me. And maybe even Purple Pig <coughs> has something <laughs> special for you guys this week. Probably not, so... Uh, uh, yeah, Purple Pig is special. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get right into it. Hi folks, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial of a reindeer that I did um, and I posted the picture on uh, Balloon Twister Central on Facebook not too long ago. I had a couple people ask me if I had a tutorial on it. Um, this is the hat version of it. This isn't the super detailed full body reindeer. This is my version that I make into a hat at restaurants, um, birthday parties, whatever. We're going to start with a Mocha Brown 260 with a hand width left over right there uninflated. And take a little piece off the end there, the nozzle end. We're going to shock twist it into a 90 degree and twist just about an inch or two past that shock twist and put a one inch pinch twist in it. Then we're going to do a little over a hand width sausage bubble, bring it back around and twist it back into that pinch twist there. Bring it right, bring the nozzle down in between the two sausage roll, bleh, the two sausage roll twists, whatever we want to call those. Now we're going to do about a hand and a thumb. Bring it back right up like this into that pinch twist as well, and twist a couple of ears. Just fold those together, split those in half like that. And that'll bring us to about right there. All right, now we're going to take this part here, the remaining neck, fold it in half, twist it, and bring the little nipple end right up to that pinch twist in the back once more. Right, that's going to be part of our head, the main part of our head. And it'll look a little something like this. All right, now I'm going to take a Toffee 260B with little more than a hand width left over and on the very end the nozzle end we're going to start with about a two inch pinch twist wrap that around then we're going to do a two finger bubble followed by another two finger bubble bring that second two finger bubble back to the pinch twist and twist it just like that okay this gets folded right into the nozzle end of the deer head, pull down nice and tight so it looks like that, squeeze a little bit of the air towards the back of it there so you have a good dead spot in it right there so we twist that into our neck, that'll be underneath this chin right there, And it'll look like that so far and that way that little dead spot also lets these two rub against each other without causing too much issue of it wanting to push one part of it out. Now come down about a hand width on the remaining tail of that Toffee 260, twist a one, to one and a half inch pitch twist, take off the rest, discard it. Now the pinch twist is going to tuck in between the two mocha neck pieces. And that's going to be our mounting point to mount it on the hat base. Right now we're at about this point. So our reindeer needs eyes. In this case I use a 6 inch white heart or a 6 inch round, a little under inflated and twisted in half. You can do dual pinch twists on a 260. I just like the fullness that the round or the heart gives me. And I don't have any white rounds in my, in my cart right now. So I'm using the, uh, the heart. And at this point it looks very much like a chihuahua. <laughs> no, um, 
We do need our red nose now. This is used with a scrap of the tip of a 260. You can also use a red round. I've been known to insert the little party lights inside a red round to make the nose. We're going to go out here to the end of the muzzle. Push it through from the back side facing the head. Pull it up and around and twist it around the mouth and the muzzle combined. All right, now we need antlers. So we got a cocoa brown 160 or chocolate brown. I want you to fold it once, twice, twist in the middle. So it looks a little something like that. Go over to the other end, squeeze the air out, stretch it out a little bit because you want it soft in the middle whenever you wrap it around the ears and do the same thing. So now our antlers look like this, twist it in the middle-ish, bring it back here behind the pinch twist behind the head. All right, and we are at this point currently. Now to make the hat base, I do use another Mocha Brown 260B. I'm gonna twist a little bit there, twist about a two inch pinch twist, wrap it, around the head typical hat base you've seen it on the very basic monkey in a palm tree but this time we're instead of leaving this part up we're going to bring it down and tie it back into the pinch twist to make the tail give it a little bit of a warp like that just so it looks like the deer's tail sticking up come out here find the middle roll that just like so Tie it in just like this. At this point, I would add the artwork to the eyes. All right, now we take our Sharpie or our Expo, whichever one you use, I use Expos. And we just quick and easy pupil. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Christmas reindeer hat. Hope you guys like it. Hope it works for you as well as it has for me. For Balloon Blast, I'm Sam Kermeens. Hey there, welcome back to Scraps and Crap. This is possibly the last edition, um, unless something else comes along, I don't know. But we've sort of beaten this into the ground, right? So, brought the scrap bucket. We're gonna make a scrap flower. So you need a, ah, zombie. Oh, I want to work a man because of the pig, you know, so, okay. No, I went ahead, I went through the bucket and I pulled out some uh, scraps that are long enough to make what we want. A six petal flower will need six, um, at least quarter of a balloon length scraps. And we need about half of a green 160, which if you make flowers, you use a lot of, you know, half of these. So there's a half, it's a 160, I'm paying attention. <laughs> the rest are all 260s. And you need uh, at least a little piece of a yellow, goldenrod, orange, whatever color you want for the middle. Ah, yes, and let me warn you, using the electric pump. Could not find a working hand pump, so ah, sorry about that. And this is a great chance to test out the new microphone, too. Haha. <laughs> all right. Now make the uh, flower stem, tie that one little round uh, bubble of yellow, turn the excess, making even more scraps, yay. All right, you know how to make a uh, the flower leaves, right? Kind of do a big loop in the middle, split that in half. Nothing new. Now, the fun part, picking out all these different scraps. Let's see, I'll start with the small red here and we'll blow it up to about, about there. So that's how big the loops will be. Now I'll use that, oh, red background, as my key scrap. So the other five will be sized to this balloon. So if we go with uh, this dark blue next, I'll tie a knot because that one doesn't have an end. Inflate, size it back down. It's kind of soft, so right there, and tie. Chop the excess there. Good. All right. Orange. Inflate. Oh, didn't have a, an end on that one either. Have one of those two pieces in it. Reverse inflated just to uh, add to the fun. All right. Size that down to the size of the red. Tie the end. I'm just 
turn all those at the same time. Um, pink. Put a bright color on there. Inflate. And resize. Yeah. Tie. Hmm. We want a light blue. Now I do want to vary this, but I don't want, you know, an odd Oh, we're sizing to the red. Like a, a gold in there or something that doesn't really make sense. A, a jewel tone or a metallic with ordinary tones. So if you want bright colors, go ahead and turn those knobs. You know, a decent assortment of you know the red end of the color wheel spectrum, the blue end. You know, vary it up. Alright, one more. Hmm. I like goldenrod, but we have yellow for the tip already. Um, I'm feeling that lilac would be the best here, so lilac, resize it to the red, and tie. All right, all the uh, work is done. Make this into a flower. Loop. There's a loop. So you have a chain of sausages, and you're just making them into petals. And very colorful petals at that. Okay, trim off the excess there. And I'm going rainbow order, so we have red, orange, oh, there's a pink, I'll put that on this side of the red, orange, hmm. I have any green in there or yellow, so they go like that. Put the middle of the flower petal in there. The flower, uh, middle of the flower. Put that out. Middle of the flower, that's what it's called. Arrange all the different colors in there, and you have a really cool rainbow flower made of what would normally be leftover scrap pieces. Good deal? Alright, that's scraps and crap. Hey, you know what? We have a short show. What? Yeah. We need to do more stuff. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do some reviews, and I wanted to mention that I found out that Lorax had the six-inch Geo Blossoms in fifty-count bags, which are much cheaper. You knew that already. I did know that already. In fact, that's how I purchased them. I, well, I, I did. get a better variety for my money that way. Uh, right. Because I use a lot of Geo Blossoms, but I don't use any particular color more than most. So. But I found that sometimes I'll have an unwanted color like. Like back in the old traditional assortment days, how you would have... The uh, the clear or the lime green, and you never use them. Lime green? Oh, yeah. Geos? Yeah. But uh, now the brain has changed all that, right? Yeah. Because I see you use a lot yeah. of lime green for that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's not what we're here to do, though. We're here to make a mess. Yes. I have a bunch of these 12-inch uh, Linko looms of different colors. Oh, and yeah. uh Blue? Awesome! We yes. We have a red background, so yeah, we're going to so, go yeah. blue, blue and pink. And pink. Probably not the red. Red won't show up as well for what we're doing here. So, we're um, having a little bit of fun. You want to explain what we're doing or just do it? Uh, let's just do it. All right. All right. Let's blow up some of these. I'm thinking like uh, Fly to the Bumblebee. Stand, little friend, yeah! stand! Yes!
well, that was a success. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. Well, we did learn from it. We learned next time to use six-inch link balloons with my fan because it's just not strong right. enough. Or a bigger fan, or helium, or yeah. basically do anything except what we did. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, that's the lesson that you should walk away from this. Is yeah. Don't don't try this at home. Yeah, we can fail pretty well on our own. Yeah. All right, let's well, wrap this up. Let's get to the right. important business. All right, a couple things we got to talk about real quick. One of them, Twist and Shot 2013. Woo! Yay! The very end of January, the very first part of February. The biggest balloon convention, as far as I know, in right. the St. Louis that weekend. Right, St. Louis is going to be big because it's in the middle of the country. It's not like when they were on the coast and people have to travel really far. A lot of people are driving in, which means they'll bring more stuff, more awesome Everyone will be there. Will you be there? You should be there. We'll be there. Oh, we will be there. In fact, two of our uh, balloon blast representatives will be there teaching. One of them, of course, Danny Schlesinger, our UK Yay! representative, will be teaching a couple of classes through the weekend as well as a master class on Wednesday. Um, our very own Scott Tripp here will also be teaching a couple of classes throughout the weekend. Oh. You guys should really check him out. Scott, you want to give us a rundown on those classes real quick? Well, I'll give you the quick version. Okay. I wanted to show people how to put together a balloon show. And I thought, oh, let's go a step further. Let's show them how to market their balloon show. Oh, let's go a step further. Let's give them a balloon show. A balloon show, you can go home on, well, most people leave Sunday. Go home and that Monday, be ready to sell. And tell you how to sell that show Monday. So, right. Also, a class called Turbocharger Balloon Bag. This is about adding different balloons to your bag that you might not already use making new balloons, where to hunt down different stuff, how to use the stuff you do find, and some different stuff you can add, like rubber balls, stickers, things that you might not have thought about adding before. And uh, it'll be fun. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and I'll be there with the Balloon Blast video camera as well as Purple Pig doing some interviews and getting some great footage for a future episode of the Balloon Blast. <laughs> um, we have one more thing we want to talk to you about real quick. It's the 12 project from our very own Scott Tripp. 12 of his so favorite cool. designs. One DVD went on pre-sale on 12, 12 of 12 for $12 and <laughs> push through it. And it should be a good one. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff on there, ranging from the simple to the higher intermediate, low advanced. Nothing crazy like a frumple twist or sidewall bubbles in a 160. The hardest it gets really is just box weaving. So look for that. Purchase that. It's already on sale. We're going through a bunch of those. They ship on 1221 of 12. Um, we only have a limited run of them, 144 copies, 12 times 12. We're going with the theme there. Um, it's going to be great stuff. So I guess that brings us up to a wrap. Yep, that's and enough for me. That works for me. So for Balloon Blast, he's Scott Tripp. He's Sam Cremains. And this is Linky Looney. Purple Pig. And Purple Pig. We'll see you guys next week. Back at the base, sparks in the software, flash the message, someone's out there. Floating in the summer sky, 99 red balloons go by.